Good morning. It's early and it's chilly. We've got the fire going this morning. Smoke out the chimney. Chimney. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so today we're going to turn the boat around and we're going back towards Castleford Junction. We're going to go straight over onto the River Calder, up towards Altoffs and Kings Road Lock, and then to Stanley Ferry. <laughs> It's 180 years old and with a span of 165 feet, the Stanley Ferry Aqueduct is not only impressive to look at, but it's one of the earliest through arch bridges in the world and the longest span aqueduct made from cast iron. It carries the air and colder navigation over the River Calder at Stanley Ferry and for over 120 years till well into the mid 1980s you'd have seen trains, long trains of Tom Pudding boats shifting thousands of tons of coal from here down towards Goole. The second aqueduct, the concrete one, that was built in 1981. This is a pump out and for those that don't know what a pump out is, on a narrowboat you've really got three types of toilet. Composting toilets, cassette toilets and pump out toilets. So in a pump out toilet you have a big tank and all the, let's call it waste, <laughs> goes into the big tank and then when it's full or when you reach a pump out point you can pump it all out. There's a big hose in here like a fireman's hose and you seal it to the boat's tank and it sucks all the waste out. So why is this one so significant? Well, this was the exact first ever pump out that I ever used. It's at Stanley Ferry. And when we had our first boat back in 2004, when we got it back here to Stanley Ferry, I thought I'll do the pump out. And I'd never done a pump out before. I was pretty sure it was easy to do, put the hose on, seal it up and suck it out. The only problem was because we had a new boat at the time, all the boaters from Stanley Ferry were kind of coming around and in the boat, having a look around, oh, it's a nice new boat and everything. We had about six people walking in the boat. I'm pumping out, thought it had finished, unsealed the hose, took it off, and liters and liters of light brown, purpley waste just came gushing back out of the hose all over the side of the boat, all over the windows, over the shoe of a lady who was jogging by. And this was responsible. We're not using it today, we've got a cassette toilet nowadays, but we're using the water point just behind it. This feels weird. Yeah, it really feels weird. We recorded so many videos from here last year at Stanley Ferry, and it feels weird to finally have Narrowboat Silver Fox mode up here. Uh, you hear all about like the Grand Union and the Leeds and Liverpool and the Oxford and the Coventry and all that lot, but how often do you hear people say the Calder and Hebble Canal? So that's where we're going. This is the air and Calder navigation. Just about a mile ahead of us, we drop back onto the River Calder through Broadreach Lock. Uh, we go up the River Calder and then it's kind of River Calder and Canal uh, just bypassing the weirs and today hopefully we will get to Horbury Bridge. We'll see you there.
getting back on boat now. Calder and Hebel is the only canal that uses a different bit of equipment for the locks. You're used to windlasses and opening padlocks with anti-vandal keys. Well, here on the Calder and Hebel, we use this. <laughs> Strange looking piece of wood. Uh, it's uh, kind of yay big at this end and narrower at this end. And it's called Calder Spike. Uh, you can get them from CRT officers and they make these at the Stanley Ferry Workshops near Wakefield. So these work the gate paddles on the gates. Let me show you how. So as you can see, this gate paddle mechanism is a little bit different to what you're used to. Uh, it's got this kind of round thing with the rectangular holes in it. Weirdly enough, exactly the same shape as our colder spike. So all we do is put the colder spike in the hole like that, turn it clockwise with a bit of brute force Slowly and surely, it opens the gate paddle. Good morning. Morning, it's a little bit misty. It is, it's like getting autumnal, where you get up in the morning and everything's wet. Like Sean's half at bed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we moored last night at Horbury Bridge, uh, which is kind of between Wakefield and Dewsbury. It's a nice enough morning. When we got here, there was only one other boat, that boat behind us. One, two, three, four, five, six of us now. <laughs> now there's six of us. Throughout the afternoon yesterday, more and more boats arrived. Uh, but this morning, we're heading out again. We're going to Shepley today, on his way to Huddersfield. Lovely morning again. It's going to be a hot one today, uh, about 30 degrees again. We've got seven locks to do between here and wherever we're going. Shepley. Yeah, or is it four locks? I hope it's four. <laughs> I hope I'm mistaken and that it's four locks. That would be good, wouldn't it? It could never count. Uh, so we're just going to grab some breakfast and then we're going to get off. Yee. morning it's gonna it be absolutely roasting so we've set off a little bit earlier we got up with the intention of setting off like half past seven eight o'clock and it's now about what 12 12 let's have a look no it's quarter past eight quarter past eight we've not done too bad Just more duck just before the junction for the Dewsbury Arm and the Thornhill double locks. Uh, there's a boat coming down, so Sean's just gone up to give them a hand, get the lock ready for us. And something happened this morning that I kind of want to talk about, and it's like a mental health thing. And it's like the canal system's all very friendly, and everybody talking to each other and saying good morning and having a chat at the locks. It's kind of a social thing, isn't it? But I find it really tough, all the social thing, starting conversations, knowing what to say. And I find it really difficult to kind of process like what people are saying to me during a conversation. So I can't get that flow that most people get when they have a conversation with a stranger. 
it's not too bad if it's somebody I know. But then it kind of makes me feel, I don't know, awkward and embarrassed because conversations kind of come to a halt and it puts me off starting a conversation and I tend to shy away from it. So if ever you see me and you try and talk to me and I don't seem very engaging or I look away or I even avoid the situation altogether and disappear into the boat, which if you pass the boat is more than likely where I'm going to be. Don't be offended, it's not you. It really is me, I'm just really bad at that kind of thing and I tend to try and avoid it. And it's probably not just me, there's probably millions of you out there that are exactly the same. So I think it's always important to remember when it comes to mental health especially, is to try not to judge people on how they first appear don't know what's going on inside there and they might seem like they're being ignorant or just rude but and sometimes they might be <laughs> but sometimes they might not sometimes they might be really struggling in the mind just think about that <laughs> Good. These locks on the Calderon Hebel are a tight squeeze for most boats. We're 57 feet long and we can just get in. We're kind of diagonally across the lock. So the front of the boat, the bow is on the right hand side and the stern is tucked in to the left hand side of the, of the, uh, of the lock. Uh, so we're 57 feet, which is supposedly the length of the lock. I have known some 60 foot boats get up here, so they say. I don't know whether they have to take the buttons off, the fenders at each end, maybe that's how they do it. And it's all good, it's all right in theory. Sorry, I'm just making sure we don't get caught. It's all good in theory, until you get a really leaky lock, and there's a few of them, and the water comes pouring into the bow. Sean wants me. a bit warm I'll tell you. 30 degrees today it's been and what was the first thing I said when we left Holbury Bridge this morning? I hope it's four. <laughs> I hope I'm mistaken and that it's four locks that would be good wouldn't it? Not four. <laughs> it was seven locks and we're so used to the key operated electric ones on the air and colder it was a bit of a shock having to wind that handle again. Push the gate. And push the gate. Do the what? Push? Push? push. I want to press a button. What century are we in? <laughs> 
<laughs> but we're here anyway. Uh, this is Shepley Bridge. The River Calder is about 200 yards behind us. You're kind of skipping from river to canal uh, between Horbury and Shepley yeah. Bridge. Uh, but here we are, we're back on the canal bit. It's a nice little marina and a cafe and a train set just behind us. He likes that. Uh, there's some trip boats, a couple of trip boats. You need to slow down, love. Yeah, speedy fast. I had to get my tyre out. <sighs> That's not a euphemism either. Just to stop us banging on the side. Mm. So we're going to moor here tonight, and then, well, tomorrow for us, next week for you, <laughs> we move on to Cooper Bridge. Now, what's special about Cooper Bridge? <laughs> what's this? Eh? What's special about Cooper Bridge? The canal splits it up. It splits off. So you can either bear like a, it's more or less like a 360, but it's yeah, like it's a big a, left turn. It's like a U-bend. Uh, which takes you down towards the Huddersfield, broad and narrow. Or you can go kind of straight on, bearing right, and it takes you up the Calder and Hebble towards the Rochdale Canal. So which way are we going? Well, you well, don't know because... We're not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's not what I'm going to say. I'm going to say they don't know because... We don't know. We don't know, but it's kind of spoiled it now. Of course we know where we're going. <sighs> uh, but yeah... That's all for next week for you. We hope you've enjoyed this vlog as usual. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or feedback or complaints or just want to tell us about your life like most people do, drop it in the comments down below. Yep. Uh, we do answer everyone. Can't promise that we actually read what we're answering, but we do answer every comment. <laughs> well, that's what we need. We need like an automatic yeah. reply generator. Copy and paste. Yeah, like, how long is your boat? 1962. <laughs> <laughs> so anything like that down in the comments below. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If you subscribe and hit the bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a brand new episode. But it is every Friday at four o'clock. But just in case you forget, YouTube will let you know. Be like, oi, oi, oi. Apparently, it does ring a... <laughs> It rings a bell, doesn't it? It's supposed to go like, well, ding. ding. Somebody told us that we're their trumpet. Yeah. Again, not a euphemism. So anyway, uh, that's it from us. Hope you have a, a nice weekend. If you're watching this on a Friday, have a nice Tuesday if you're watching it on Monday. And we will see you next time. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. Ah, mind went. We have got a bit of a treat and it, uh, And he got it wrong. What'd be better than this? Justin Bieber doing a concert on roof, that'd be better. No. Oh. <laughs> Rotate it. This one's knackered. You can put your bell wherever you want it. <laughs> we are knackered. <laughs> God, it's getting warm, isn't it? <sighs> Boily hot. If you really hate it and you don't like us, we send his mother round. <laughs> Take 12. <laughs> and what was the last thing I said when we left Aubrey this morning? Five locks. No, I said four locks. Did you say four? <laughs> yeah. But it were either. It was seven locks. <laughs> and again. Whoo, it's so hot. <laughs>